Hi, welcome to Enter the Bunker, where we launch you into thriving. Each week, we talk about a different virtue that can be used as a building brick to build your own personal bunkers. We share personal stories, as well as tips and tricks to help you thrive instead of survive. So sit down, relax, and enter the bunker. Welcome to Enter the Bunker. This week's building brick is self-discipline. This is part two, and we're going to go over the benefits on how self-discipline can benefit you. So my name's Kelly. And I'm Jonathan. And let's get into it. We have four ways here. Okay, number one, achieve your long-term goals. One of the quotes in our last episode was, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. This point speaks to that quote in a very direct way. Self-discipline is what will allow you to reach your goals. You never reach your goals without effort and being self and being disciplined to keep putting in the effort, especially when things get tough, will help you to accomplish those goals. Yeah, I guess it's all about putting in the effort like you just you, you keep on trucking. <laughs> right? Like, I just feel like. I don't know. Yeah. Like, even when things come down, like, I guess if things seem like they're getting down, like, you still got to keep going. Like, you got to have that self-discipline to get to the long-term goals. If you didn't have it, you wouldn't get there. Yeah, because it's, it's like the quote says, it's the bridge between goals and accomplishments. So if you want to, so if you want to accomplish things, you're going to have to be disciplined to get them because there's going to be other things that are going to pull you away from that. Uh, So to achieve long-term goals you got to be self-disciplined. And so that's something that is, is very clear in terms of like how you do that. Again, uh, I mentioned it in our last episode where I talked about just having a really powerful vision, the more, the, the greater the vision and the more excited you are about it, the easier it is for you to be able to like really go towards it and to be, have the discipline to keep at it. Mm-hmm. Right. If it's not big enough, if it's not what you really want, then yeah, you're going to end up being a slave to, something else that's just going to pull you away from it. You're not mm-hmm. going to be able to keep that sustainable self-discipline, that self-control right. uh, to be able to, to be able to achieve it. So it's all about creating a vision that's so powerful, so clear, so like go into the details of it. That right? nothing's going to stand in the way. It, not just not, not just nothing's going to stand in the way. It's just, it's something that's so important to you and yeah. it's so clear to you yeah. that when you look at every, like, it's almost like it's real and you just got this destination. You got to get there. That is going to allow you to be able to have the discipline to do the things to get there because it's, it's something that you're just so excited about. Right. So everything else just falls away. It's not as important. Right. So it's really, and that's how you accomplish your goals. So I think that as long as you can put more details into whatever it is you want to accomplish as your goals, Mm -hmm. then that makes it better. So like, if it's, if your goal, for example, is like, I want to have a new car, yeah, right? Yeah. Then what are you doing? Like, you should be shopping for a car, like you're going to buy a car, yeah, right? And actually finding out what's the car you want, yeah. you know, how much does it cost? What am I going to need to do to get there? You know, and, and these types of things get right down to where it's like, okay, here's the destination. That's the car I'm going to get. I'm going to have it by this date. And this is the date I got to have it. Yeah. And then set things in motion to actually get there. And so unless you do that, if you, if you're like, because there's a difference between wishful thinking yeah. and planning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Lots of people are wishful thinkers. Yeah. Right? It's just like, oh, yeah, it'd be nice. Everybody is every day. Yeah. yeah. So, like, everybody like, yeah, nice to have a new car. Right? And that's the end of it. Yeah. Right? They never get into actually, like, creating a vision, going for it, and then actually getting down to it and taking no action towards it. So, that's wishful thinking. And that is not the same as being goal-oriented or creating a vision and so forth. So, you're you're so much further ahead if you can just take those extra steps and create something that's real. The thing I used to do when I was younger, I used to go out and look at like, <laughs> so I, when I was younger, I didn't even really know what I wanted. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they really don't know, no. right? It's just, they don't know. So you kind of have to step into other people's dreams. You have to kind of like look at the way other people are living. So I used to like go to the car lots and look at all the cool cars and we're like, yeah, this is awesome, this is awesome. Like I used to think that, the Nissan Z350, I think it was, is what it was. It's, a, it's like the Sportster car, yeah. right? And I used to think that that was like so cool and everything. But it's like, 
really wasn't, it really didn't suit me though. Yeah. But at the time I was just like, yeah, that'd be a cool car. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then you kind of play with these different things. And as you do that, you really get down to what is it that you really want. Right. right? But it's, it's an exercise. And if you could just take the effort to do that, for some people, like if you told people like, yeah, I'm going to go and shop for a dream or something like that. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> but if you're just like, if you're just like to go and, and another, another activity that people did was like, they would like go to the mall and like look at different things that they could never afford. Yeah. But they do it anyway, just to, just to get the idea of like, you know, is that what, something I really want? It's like, wow, it'd be amazing if I could be able to afford that. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. And then that exercise just gets it so that you actually are telling your mind, you're just like, okay, what is it that I really want here? Yeah. Right. And that helps because now not only are you setting your mind in motion for like, okay, what's going to be the goal, but at the same time, you are um, you're taking actions like you're 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 training your mind to be like, OK, I got to take actions to actually get there. Mm -hmm. Right. And all these different things, they just I mean, they'll fall by the wayside. You'll figure out what you want. Uh, but it's it's not something that we're taught in society today to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like talk crap about others. Say, say you know, don't don't you know, like and just kind of uh, find talk, your business. Talk about talk <laughs> about talk about just just talk, yeah. you know. And if you actually go out and do something about it, then you get laughed at. Yeah. Right? It's just like, oh, right. that's just like, oh, you're being silly. Oh, you're just the dreamer. Yeah. You know, sort of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, I, I can't, I lost count how many times when I was younger where I was like, I was being, I was, I was like, my family used to say that sort of thing about me. It was just like, oh, he's just dreaming. You know, like, oh, it's just, oh, it's all that kind of, that's a crazy talk that he's never yeah. going to do sort of thing. Yeah. The stuff I, I talked about was crazy. Yeah. I, I <laughs> so like, here I am in a nuclear bunker so I guess yeah. that's what that's what happens so, but that this is it's just it's something that you have to break through and not be afraid of you yeah. know so uh I guess really what really resonates is keeping that end goal yeah like you gotta you gotta keep that crystal clear for you make it crystal clear yeah yeah make it as real as you know it's right in front of you and you just gotta take the action to get it and that, and then the self discipline to it do comes that with it. comes with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two, increase physical health. This one probably seems obvious and is what most people thought about when thinking about self discipline can benefit you. But it's obvious because it's true, not because it's easy. If you want to have better physical health, you have to have the discipline to make it happen in the gym, in the kitchen, in the great outdoors. Remember, what we do repetitively becomes a habit. Foster the discipline to make good habits. Habit takes 21 days, folks, and 90 days for behavior. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, this is obviously speaking to yeah. health. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you want to have better physical health, you have to have the discipline to make it happen. Here I am, 30 pounds overweight, and I haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> But I I yo-yo diet, like I talked about that before. Yeah. Uh, and so this for me is something that I have a challenge with. And uh, I've had it, I've had this challenge my whole life. Uh, whether I figure it out, maybe when I get into my 50s or something. Well, honestly, <laughs> I, I kind of like the way that you're thinking, though, at the beginning, where you said, like, you're thinking more about the future. You're wondering if that'll be like your oomph to get you going. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's um, sometimes you... I'd like to think that everybody would want to lose weight for themselves. And it was like a trigger for themselves. Like you said, like doing your last belt buckle, but it, sometimes it, the trigger might, you might want to be happy and healthy for your kids or for the future. Cause you don't, it's a crazy world we're living in. You don't know what the future will come. Yeah. So like, it doesn't always have to be like you're doing it. I mean, in the end, you're still doing it for yourself, but there's just, it's, there's more reasons than just yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But there has to be an urgency to it. Like, yes. Like does. whatever, whatever I come up with, it has to be something that I'm just like, I got to do this now. Yeah. Right. And there's, and it's like, I can't dilly dally on it because yeah, like 30 true. pounds, you could lose 30 pounds in like a month, yeah. like with real effort. Yeah. Uh, and then like, that's, and that kind of effort, that's like a Herculean effort. Like I, I couldn't put in that kind of effort just because of all the other responsibilities I have. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. But in the course of like three to four months, easily, can do it with just adjusting some habits and, yeah. and things like Small that. Small habits. And yeah. Too. And so I think that it's just a matter of <clears throat> getting the urgency, yeah. right. And just having, having that vision that is so important to me that I actually make it happen. Uh, and so when it comes to physical health for a lot of people, you know, 
there's really nothing pushing them to have to be more physically fit until there's like a Murata chasing them for a can of food. Honestly. So like, <laughs> like, like think about running down the street after somebody that was like chasing you. And like now suddenly your health is like pretty important. What did it for me was because like I've lost actually quite a bit of weight over the last few months, two, three months, but um, was chubby armpits. Oh, okay. I was shaving my armpits one day and they were just like pudgy. And I was like, who knew armpits could get pudgy? So it was that. And then I got on the scale at my mom's because I don't have a scale at my house. I got on a scale at my mom's and she's lost a lot of weight. She had a heart attack a little while ago. So health issues and stuff. So she's but she's been she's been looking after herself and really she's looking great. That is motivating. Yes. Nice. Um, and anyways, so but we were the same weight because she lost a bunch and I gained a bunch. So we ended up being the same. And so I think that and the fact that my armpits were chubby, those were my two things. And it was like, OK, like. I did never thought in my life armpits could get like pudgy. <laughs> and I was like, that's, that was my trigger. I think honestly, that right there was yeah. pudgy armpits, but I don't know what. And then I was just like, okay, time to start eating healthy. And that was, that, that was just, that was it. That was the urgency for me right there was chubby yeah. armpits. Like what a weird thing, but yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Mark, armpits yeah. Would do that. yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, <laughs> and the same, it's, it's like the last, the last uh, notch on the belt buckle for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, okay, I can't put my belt on anymore. I'm supposed to be normally when I wear it, it's like at least two notches down, yeah. you know? So it's like, how did I get here? Yeah. So, so yeah, that's for you. That's, that's exactly it. And yeah. so when that happens, it just, it, it just uh, triggers you and you're able to actually put in the habits. To make my physical health better for that yeah. one. Yeah. And it was really quick too, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was instant. Yeah. Like it, the next morning I was waking up, drinking lemon water, having yogurt breakfast, like boom, boom. Yeah. Instant. Um, I guess so now it's just, I'm going to have to make sure I keep up with it now. Yeah. That's going to, cause as you're saying like this, I've only ever like lost weight, like a lot once in my life. So I don't want to be that yo-yo cause I, I lost it, then I gained it and now I've lost it again. So I'll, I don't want to be the roller coaster of the yo-yo. <laughs> no, no, I don't recommend it. No, so. no. I'll just keep thinking pudgy armpits. <laughs> yeah. Maybe just put a marshmallow on your desk and just like, yeah, <laughs> that's not what you want. <laughs> too funny okay number three uh become more resilient life comes at you hard and fast some things will be victories and others will be disasters having the ability to bounce back easily after adversity can come back from having good self-discipline not everything will always bounce your way but when it doesn't believe in your abilities and process and have the discipline to not stray from them when the get tough gets going or the yeah. going gets tough same thing, right? Um, so yeah, I feel like that's a hard one. It's hard to sometimes bounce back. Well, I guess if you have that end goal though. You become more resilient when you have the when you have a self-discipline like we talked about, right? So yeah. if uh there there's gonna be good times and bad times. Mm -hmm. And again, coming back to the vision again, if your vision is so big, if it's so I know that's just what I yeah, then everything else just falls by the wayside yeah. and then you do become more resilient, yeah. right? So all those things that used to be huge mountains now become these little molehills and mm -hmm. you just kind of trample over them like they're nothing. So your resilience is high. Yeah. And for a lot of people, that's very strange because a lot of people are slaves to their moods and to, yeah. and to the things that happen to them. So something bad happens, suddenly their whole world is in disarray and they're just so upset and you know, now and don't get me wrong. I think it's okay to take some time to do that. Sometimes you take some time, but but the, then bounce back. You bounce back. Yeah, yeah, your resilience isn't like taking months no. or something, take or day. or every single day <laughs> you're just constantly jabbing into yourself because of it. And that's what happens to a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? So you you want to be able to so you want to be able to have a vision, and once you establish that vision, it just becomes so big. Like I said, then the resilience it's there. It just uh, it just be, it's it's baked in yeah honestly reading through all of these every time i think i'm like oh my gosh this is hard and then i'm like at the same time I'm like you just got to think of that big picture at the end like if if you're if that is crystal clear like i feel like all of these are just going to be like you'll just fly and soar over them yeah um okay and the last one here is feel happier admit it you feel happier when things work out when you accomplish your goals that often comes from that often comes from feeling in control of your life. When you have good self-discipline, you will feel more in control as you have the ability to stick with your plan. 
And that will give you a better sense of well-being and that just makes you happy. Absolutely. So just like at the end of the day, when you got all kinds of things done, because that's what you set out to do. Yeah. You feel great. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you don't, you just feel frustrated and, and, and you're just like, oh, I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Right. So, yeah. And it's because, again, with self-discipline, then you can make sure that you're achieving your goals and you're actually going to be happier that way. So if you, again, set out with a clear vision and you actually push towards that, everything should stay out. Everything should be, should be able to like go by the wayside to, to make that happen. Sometimes things come up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel or it's out of your control. Yeah. Well, sometimes, yeah, things happen and then you get frustrated by it a little bit, but again, the self-discipline to come back and have the, and have, and, and, and go back to whatever your goal is, that is where you achieve. And, and, and sometimes for some people that's, it's easier sometimes to say like, well, today this, this, and this happened and that's why I wasn't able to do it and yada, yada. Well then just, okay, push it aside and just refocus and mm -hmm. get back to that. Because if you keep on doing that, then there's never going to be enough time for anything. And I'm saying this to you and to everybody as much as I'm saying it to myself because I go through this all the time when I've just got this huge thing, like I got a huge amount of things on my plate. And instead of being able to actually get it all done like I want to, I end up getting into other things. And that's my own lack of self-discipline to, mm -hmm. be, able to uh, to be able to achieve the things that I, that I know are important, but then I put them aside and do other things that, are not as important, but I want to do them, right? Yeah. So it's about doing what you need and not not necessarily what you want, mm -hmm. and uh, and you're just happier. And like, and there's so many there's there's a number there's so many things where like sometimes it gets put off, it gets put off, and then finally when I get it done, it's just a huge weight off from me. Oh, I'm just so like, big. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's done. Thank God. And I'm just like, yeah, that's great. Uh, and and so if you could just do that more consistently, though, just be consistent and in, in, uh, pushing towards those things and, and, and achieving those goals. Yeah. You're going to be happier like yeah. overall every day. So only, only the discipline are truly free. Right. Yeah. And free, with freedom comes happiness. And so the rest are yeah. slaves yeah. to moods and appetites. And what was the last one? Moods, appetites, and uh, passion, passions. Yeah. Passion. Yeah. That was a good one. All right. Well, that is self-discipline. Thank you all so much for joining us for this week's Building Brick. And we'll see you next week with Certitude. We'll see you there. Thank you for listening to Enter the Bunker. Make sure to follow us on Instagram where you can share your story and also look at behind the scenes of how we make our podcast. You can watch the video version of this podcast on YouTube by simply searching Enter the Bunker. Tune in next time as we launch into thriving.